All right, guys, let me get my ear pods in here. There we go. Can you guys hear me okay with these things? Yes, okay. All right, let me slide over to the view here. I can see Chad. Okay, Ronnie, Ryan, what's up, Rye? Here we How's go. It? We got Eve, we got, there we go. What's up, Paris? Sliding through here. I'm on my iPhone today, so that's why I'm like diving, looking in like this a little bit. Noah, Abria, what's up, guys? Go ahead if you can. You can put your, yeah. your cameras on if you can get your cameras flowing. Everybody's looking good, though. All right. So happy Friday and uh, just welcome to the call. And it's great to be able to spend some time with you guys uh, here. And just uh, before you get into your career, before the career gets started. And um, I, I'm going to take the time today to just go over a couple things that will help us uh, prepare for our career. So if, if, you, um, if you have a pen and paper, uh, you definitely will have opportunity to take some pretty good notes on some stuff today. So um, you can definitely jot some notes down and, uh, you know, none of the stuff that I'm going to give you guys is anything groundbreaking or, or crazy. Um, but it's just things that were told to me when I started into the career and, uh, before I got into the career, right at the beginning, some advice that really helped me out. So I wanted to spend time with you guys and just kind of give you, um, what, what, what was given to me and, um, hopefully it helps you guys out too. So. Um, congratulations guys on, on getting into the career. First of all, you got to really just think about that, you know, alone, uh, just the fact that, that you guys have taken the, um, have, have gotten involved with the company, have, have taken your career seriously and, and you're doing something about it and you're taking your future into your own hands. So, you know, congratulations on getting into the right industry in the right business with the right company and with the right team. Um, we have uh, just a, uh, a, a great history um, as an industry. You know, if you just look at the life insurance industry altogether, more millionaires have been born from the life insurance industry than any other industry out there is what they say. And one of the main reasons is because of residual income. You know, some things pay income residually but this is one of the only things I know that you can get paid residual income for the rest of your life. If you think about the product that we serve, we sell people, we, we sell life insurance. And, and the life insurance that we use is called whole life. So when people have a whole life policy, guess how long they keep their whole life policy for? Kind of like a trick question, right? <laughs> Kind of like a trick question because you technically should have it for what? For your whole life. So as long as they continue to pay for their program, then we get paid every single month that they have that program. And um, it doesn't really make sense for clients to enroll into their life insurance and then pay for it for 10 years and then, and then cancel and try and go to another company or something. Because now you're 10 years older and it's going to cost you way more for the same amount of coverage. So that's why, uh, you know, the, 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 the renewals and the residual income is so, so huge, you know, in our industry. Now, there's some companies out there, you don't get residual income. You know, there's some companies out there that you can do the work and, and they just don't have it. We're just fortunate in it to be with our company. You know, American Income Life Guys has been around. This is a 70-year anniversary. I'm surprised the company isn't bragging about that more. But we were founded in 1951. So it's, it's 2021. So we got 70 years under our belt of, of uh, a lot of growth. And as you guys know, you know, over the last year has been just crazy across the whole world, really. And, you know, our company was affected as well by it because we were the number one in-home life insurance provider in the country. And we weren't able to meet with clients in their home anymore. So you could imagine how much of a problem that would be for your business. 
So it's just great to know that everything rises and falls on leadership. And let me add somebody in here. So, you know, just always remember that everything rises and falls on leadership. If you see a team winning, if you see a great business, if you see people overcome adversity, if you see a team coming back from a great deficit and winning the game, you got a team that's down, you know, and they come back to win it. That's all leadership. That's all it is. So it, we're just blessed to have great leaders um, because Globe Life is the largest life insurance company in the United States. We have more policyholders than any other company out there. Uh, Globe Life is, is very, very, Tommy, Globe Life is very, very successful. And there's, there's a reason for it because of the leadership, you know? And, and what's nice is Globe Life leads and then our company, American Income Life, is, is, is under Globe Life. That's our parent company. So their leaders lead our leaders. And our leaders, they got together and were able to turn something that could be very detrimental into something that was very profitable for us and allowed us now to do these meetings, which we never did this before, guys. Like uh, what, for the last 12 years of my life, I've been with this company, right? And um, if I wanted to meet with you guys, we would all have to be in person. Could you imagine that? Like you guys would have to drive to the office. I'd have to drive to the office and we'd have to go in the, in the conference room and we'd all have to meet and, and go over all this stuff because it just didn't exist, this, this Zoom virtual world. So uh, being able to take advantage of the, the virtual the company was able to put in front of us allows us to do things and, and be virtually anywhere at any time. So uh, I just thought it was amazing how, you know, we have great leaders that we're able to within nine days figure out we got a problem we need to come up with a solution they got together developed the solution and implemented the solution and turned which could have been a huge problem into actually something that took our company to the next level we have 15 months of record breaking growth in a row as an international company so uh, they definitely were able to take that and spin it to, to a positive. In our agency, you know, being founded right around a year ago, um, right in the middle, right before the pandemic, we opened up the doors and a week later, the pandemic hit. So talk about being born into adversity. You know, we're able, you know, we're already able to have a little bit more thick skin and we're able to kind of handle things when they come our way because we kind of were born into it. So, um, but, you know, anyways, uh, you can sell a lot of things. You know, we're, we actually get to be selling life insurance out of all the stuff in, in the world. And I'll be honest with you guys, when I got into this industry, I graduated college and I got right into this industry and I became a financial advisor because I wanted to manage money. I wanted to be on Wall Street. You know, I wanted to do all that. So I did that for three years. I was a stockbroker, man. And I'll tell you, I, I was all in the stocks and I would listen to Bloomberg and all that stuff all day long. Um, my first year, I worked about 80, 90 hours a week, at least. No vacations. I made $32,000. <laughs> That's a tough pill to swallow. My second year, I made like 50000 in my third year, I made it maybe right around 70, 70,000. I added up all the hours that I put in and the amount of money I made. I averaged about $9.25 an hour <laughs> for my first three years, being a financial advisor, managing people's, all of their assets, like every single penny that your mom and dad would have, I was managing it. So, but uh, I was growing my career and moving forward. I left that career in 2008 after three years and I came to this company and, uh, you know, people call it luck, you know, luck is when preparation meets opportunity, you know, so, so right now you guys met this opportunity right now. And, and as long as you're prepared to take advantage of it, you're, you're going to be very successful and people are going to start calling you lucky. And you say, I wasn't lucky. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. You know, I was prepared. And when the opportunity met me, I was able to take advantage of it. 
So, you know, when I came into this company, guys, I already had the understanding that, um, you know, you typically would have to cold call and prospect to get clients. And that takes a lot of time. Think about that. You're going to spend 80, 90% of your time chasing people around and only 10% of your time actually meeting with them. So, so that's what I did for three years. So when I came here, we don't have to do the cold calling or prospecting. And I found that I was able to kind of pour more time into just building my clientele, working with my clients. And literally within my first year, I made over $120,000 with this company. And I think a lot of that had to do with my preparation coming in. My me I mentally was very appreciative of this opportunity because where I was before, we never got a lead, like not one lead. You didn't, they, didn't, they, were, they would look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> so we have people with this company, with this is why I'm here, is because we don't have to cold call our prospect. I could spend all of my time meeting my clients and building my book of business. So at the end of a year or two years or 10 years, I can pick my head up. And, and the more clients that I have on my book of business, the more residual income I'm going to build. So if I'm spending 90% of my time chasing people around and only 10% of my time building my book of business, it's going to build a lot slower. So I saw this as just an opportunity, you know, where fundamentally as a business model, it made a lot of sense. And then I thought to myself, if I was going to be in leadership and I wanted to have somebody on my team achieve success, well, it's going to be hard for them to achieve success if they're spending 90% of their time prospecting. So what I like is that if I wanted to get in management or leadership in this business and I wanted to have a team and them be successful, well, they don't have to cold call or prospect either. So I thought that was just great on, on that aspect. Um, but, you know, right now, guys, uh, most of us should be right around the corner of, of either, you know, passing their license and getting their license or, or maybe you're in the middle of your course right now. So, you know, a couple of things that they told me is, is, you know, when you get on the course, you want to get off the course as quick as possible. You want to get through it and be done with it as quick as possible. The longer that you spend on the licensing course, the lower of, of the, the test scores that you get on your, on your test. The people to get through the course the fastest typically actually have the higher test scores. I'm sure there's some outliers in between there, but for the most part, that's the general rule of thumb there. So um, what, what, that, what I did, is, is I, I kind of locked myself in a room for like a week and, 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 and didn't do nothing but just study on this course and work out. You know, I took a little, you got to take some breaks. You got to go for a walk. Okay. If you lock, if you study this course for all, all day long, you're going to drive yourself crazy. So, you know, you got to go to the gym, you know, you go, go for a swim in the pool, go for a hike, go for a bike, go for a walk, you know, eat eat dinner and lunch and breakfast, you know, take care of yourself, obviously. Um, but for the most part, though, if my friends were calling me to go out on a Wednesday night, Monday night football was going on, I couldn't do it. I would say, say guys, I got to pass this test right now. You know, so any extracurriculars for me was 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 out of the question until I got this done. So so my, my, when I got hired, I was asking my boss all kind of questions. You know, I was like, well, how about when I start, you know, what about this? And you know, how's the, you know, if I end up getting 10 people to do this, like how much would I make? And, you know, what next year, he's like, slow down. All the questions you're asking, um, I'll answer them for you, but it's pretty much going to be a waste of your time and my time going through all these questions. If you don't get your license, <laughs> it's pointless, you know? So he said, you don't got to worry about nothing. Okay. We got this. We've been doing this for years. The company is extremely successful. We have a playbook. We have systems. We have procedures. And it works. There's been multi-millionaires that created all this for us. And we don't even got to think. All you got to worry about right now is two things. You know what he told me? He said, you got to study and you got to pass. <laughs> That's it. Other than that, nothing matters. So, so I really took that to heart. And... Uh, and I, I literally went home and did, did what I told you guys. I didn't even like, I barely even talked to anybody. I said, I got to pass this test and, and I got it done. You know, I just got it done, hammered it out. I don't like studying, you know, I don't like studying and I don't like, sorry, I got to stop that. And I don't like taking tests. 
So for me, it's like painful. So get through it as quick as possible, like ripping a Band-Aid off, right? You don't want to prolong anything or make it long last, like make it last longer than it really needs to. Also, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. Does anybody hear that one before? You're making something bigger than it really is. But it's not that complicated. The test, it's not, it's not um, that big of a deal on how you do on this test. You just need to pass it. So don't get all caught up in like knowing the information in and out. So you get a 95% on the test or 99%. Basically, if you get a 95%, you know what you did? You studied too much. <laughs> you studied 25% too much than you even needed to. So, uh, but, but yeah, um, the, uh, the, the how you score on this test has no bearing on how you do in the business. I'll tell you probably 80, 90% of the stuff on the test is just like, protocol fundamentals like you're never going to need to know the, the the laws or what the fine is or you know how the annuity pays out like we don't all that stuff is is just stuff that you need to know to pass the test all right so um so those are some things that were told me about uh, oh and taking the test you know what they say on taking the test is uh it's an a b c d so it's multiple choice so if you can um get used to the process of elimination a little bit. One way to help with process of elimination is knowing the um, vocabulary words, knowing the terminology, knowing what words, what certain words mean. Because now if you're looking at the answers, A, B, C, D, and you can identify that, you know, uh, answer D, I know what answer D means. I know what that word means. And that has nothing to do with the question that they're even asking, because they're going to throw some tricks, trick things in there. So you can eliminate a few answers just by knowing the terminology. So I know that that helps. Um, try to take the test in the morning before you don't want to take it late in the day if, if, if you know, before you get all kind of stuff in your head. So so try and take it earlier in the day. Get some caffeine you in you before the 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 uh, get your brain going before you take your test. They say it will help. Don't take too much, but you know, get a nice little jolt of caffeine to get your brain going there. Uh, and those are just some test taking you know techniques. Um, and then and then once you guys pass your test, what are some of the next steps? So let's say we we passed our test today. We took our state exam and passed our test. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to send your test scores to the state and then they're going to verify, you know, who you are and, and they're going to do a background check and then they're going to issue your license. So that can take, if you took your test today and you sent your test scores up today and you applied for your license today, it would take seven to 14 days for us to count on that turnaround. I've seen it happen in less than that. But right around, you know, seven to 10 days even is how long it typically should take for your license to actually uh, get issued. You'll get a license number and you will be official forever. Never got to take that test again. Um, now, when your license comes in and you're official, now we can uh, start training. So that's when we can officially start training. So you'll see, you'll notice that from the time that you pass your test until the time that your license comes in, there's typically going to be a good week or two weeks of you know what we could call downtime or, or whatnot, waiting period. So while we're waiting for your license to come in, um, we would want to start getting uh, you prepared as much as possible before training class. So the number one thing that you can do to prepare for training class is to uh, master your script like an actor. So you're going to have a script and it's, it's basically the presentation that we go over with the client. And, and there's certain things that you have to hit on in there and you want to know it kind of like an actor, like verbatim. So um, you're going to have a week or sometimes even two weeks to get ready for class and really master your script. So um, you can work on that. And if you learn your script, 
then we can actually start working with you on phone calls. Because that's how we set most of our appointments with our clients is we're giving them calls and, and setting up a time. So once you know your script, then we can work on the phone calls with you. And, uh, and, if, you're in, 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 uh, and if you know your script, you can also sit in and hop onto a live presentation with a client, with your manager. So kind of, um, you can't go into the field. We call it going into the field, but we don't really drive into the field anymore, but we used to about a year and a half ago, I was driving to see the clients. So now when you go out to see your clients for a day and you're, you're typically for your first week or two or three, you're going to be with a manager. So, so you can't go out with a manager and you can't see any live presentations until you know your script first. Otherwise, it'll be like almost confusing to you. So, uh, so once you know your script, then we teach the phones and you're also allowed to go out and see clients. You can do all of that before your training class even starts. That'll give you a leg up. And, it's, and I want you guys to be as prepared as possible when you start your career. So the more we can do up front now to prepare you, obviously, the better and we'll take it. Um, so, so let's see here. What, what are your first few? So you'll go through, um, your first week of training and then your second week of training and each day in training, you're going to get a little bit better and a little bit better. And we're going to keep adding on and adding on. And maybe your first week you can do maybe 50% of the presentation, but in the second week, you should be able to do a hundred percent of your presentation in front of a client. And typically two, three weeks, you're, you're good to go. You're able to talk to people and meet with clientele. You're going to not, not know at all, but you're going to know enough to be able to meet with the clients and, uh, and start getting comfortable out there. Now, uh, your manager will be with you the whole entire time. We will hold your hand every step of the way. We can't afford to just, you know, give you the training manual and say, good luck. That can cause a lot of problems in our business, right? So believe me, we're going to make sure that you're well prepared because we can't afford to get any complaints either. If I have a group of a thousand, you know, or, or I don't know, five thousand members that's in this group, and and I send someone out there to meet with that members, and we misrepresent the company or upset someone because we're not prepared they're going to complain to the leader of that organization. And that leader can say, Hey, I'm canceling this whole program. And now all of a sudden we lost 5,000 members <laughs> that we should be seeing and servicing. That could be majorly detrimental to the business. So that's why we make sure up front that we don't just hire anybody. That's why I told you guys, congratulations. We don't just hire anybody. Like we need the elite of the elite, the best of the best, the, the, the people, the, the people that care and that, that are going to do a great job, you know? So that's obviously, you know, why you guys are here and you understand the, 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 the importance of, you know, our, our business and our industry and, um, and what we do. So, but, you know, now, uh, now that we hired the right people, the next thing is we have to make sure we're giving you the right training, the best training, you know? And then, and then at the end of the day, I'll tell you what, if we got the right people, and we got the right training, we end up getting the right results at the end. So it all works out. Um, so, so, you know, guys, uh, a couple of things you can do is, is in the meantime, you know, definitely just knock that, 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 uh, that license out. As soon as you pass your test, give us a call, call your direct manager uh, and let them know. I'm sure they're going to be really excited for you. And, um, uh, in the meantime, though, on uh, Monday at 11 o'clock, we have our agency meeting. So you guys can hop on there and get involved with, with the team. So Monday at 11. Uh, and then um, Tuesday at 11, I'm meeting uh, next week with a handful of people that want to get into leadership. And I wanted to talk specifically about the leadership track and kind of what it takes and, and get proactively and prepared with that. So if you're someone that, you know, raises your hand and says, you know, I want to get into the leadership and it's, you know, it's on my heart, something I want to do. And that's your career goals. Um, you know, I'm going to actually take time and meet with you beforehand, something that I wish somebody would have done for me when I was in your shoes. And that's why we were doing it 
is to get you guys uh, prepared. If you want to get into leadership Tuesday at 11, um, I'll be, I'll be hosting that and uh, meeting with a couple handful of people. So let your manager know if you'd like to be involved with that. Uh, not everybody, you know, wants to be in leadership and, and do, do all that. But if that's you, you could hop on Tuesday at 11. Um, and then one other thing is, is I would, uh, you know, hop on a zoom call with your manager and, and maybe even some of the trainers that are going to be on your team, even if it's a five, 10 minute, just a quick little huddle, just to put a face with the name and introduce everybody. So, you know, next time you talk to your manager uh, and your leader, say, hey, you know, what, maybe we could hop on a Zoom call with, with some, some of the team, right? If there's any team meetings that I could hop on, try and hop on some team meetings or, you know, any get togethers that we do on Zoom, you know, in the meantime. If you're in the Chicago area, come up to the office, uh, you're more than welcome to, don't feel shy by any means. Uh, and, uh, and we'd love to have you over at the office as well. So Monday at 11 for an agency meeting is actually a pretty good time to come up, but you can talk to your manager a little bit more about that schedule time and get that etched out. So um, thanks for hopping on today, guys. It's a pleasure to see all you guys and, and semi meet you here on a Zoom call. Look forward to seeing some of you guys in person soon, working with you and all that. Um, good luck on your test and uh, have a great weekend. Thanks, Tommy. All right. Thanks, man. You, you too. It, guys. All right. See you. Have a good weekend. Take care.